Okay, so now we have this topic. It says inferring properties of a polynomial function from its graph. And so we're doing the reverse now. So before we were looking at the polynomial and then trying to figure out the function or trying to figure out the graph. Now we're given the graph and they want us to figure out what the function would look like. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through all of this. So it says the function is increasing on which of the intervals? So trace it from left to right. So as I go from here, one, two, three, four, negative four, as I go from here to here, I am actually going downward, so that is decreasing. But then from this x value, negative four, to this point here at x equal to zero, I am increasing. So in this section here, I am increasing. And that interval is from negative four to zero always the x values when you're doing intervals. Now from zero to this x value, I'm actually going downward, but then from this x value to this little peak, I'm increasing again. One, two, three, four. So from positive four to positive seven, it looks like, I am increasing again, okay? And those are the only intervals where I'm increasing. If it had asked me for intervals of decreasing, it would most likely be these other intervals that we don't have here. Now, local minimum at the x values, at which x values? So where do you have little valleys? If they had asked me for the maxima, I would be looking for the peaks. Well, I have one little valley here, and I have one valley there. If, again, if they were asking me for maxima, this would be one maxima and that would be one maximum because those are the peaks. Minima is the valleys. What is the x value though here? That x value is a negative four. And what is the x value here? It's a positive four. Then the sign of my leading coefficient. So remember, you have four choices to choose from. You have this um, in behavior, this in behavior, so here you have a positive coefficient, here you have a negative coefficient, but the exponent is even. Or you have odd, where it goes like this for the positive exponent, and it goes like this for a negative, not sorry, positive coefficient versus the negative coefficient. Which kind of in behavior do I have? I have one of these, right, because it's going one way to the left and a different way to the right, so it's not the even kind. It's an odd kind. And I'm going on up to the left and down to the right. So it's going to be this one here that I have, which means that my leading coefficient is going to be negative. And then as far as degree, we're gonna choose the degree that applies. Now notice, you have one x-intercept right here. You have another x-intercept right here, another one here, and another one there. So at this one, you're crossing, which means that exponent would have an exponent of one. Then you're crossing here, which means that would have an exponent of one. Crossing there, that would have an exponent of one. And then you're touching here, so that one would have an exponent of two. And if you were to multiply all those exponents together, or multiply all these factors together, you end up adding all the exponents. So if I add all of those exponents together, I get the exponent of five, okay? But we mentioned that um, the exponent needed to be odd, right? Because of the in behavior. So it definitely cannot be four, six, or eight. Now it should be five. However, what happens if instead of this being a square, right? Instead of x minus 7 having a square, what if it had a fourth power? It would still bounce like that, right? But you'd have 1, 1, 1, and then 4. Which means you could have 7 as an exponent. What if that had an exponent of 6? Then now, again, it would still bounce but your exponents would be one, 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 and six, which means nine is also a possibility. So when they say choose all that apply, any of those bouncing 
polynomials could have higher degrees than just two. And so you end up with three different options for this particular graph.